In this video, we will demonstrate how to reference static content like JavaScript and CSS files in Spring Boot. We will see the three ways of referencing by including the files locally in our projects, by including them in the Maven spawn file as web jars, and finally by referring to a CDN URL. CDN or Content Data Network is our files hosted somewhere and we just simply refer to them. Here I have Spring Tool Suite running on my machine which is a flavor of Eclipse. Let us create a new project by clicking File, Other, Spring Boot, Spring Starter Project and call it Demo Static. Click Next. Let us choose from the Web node Web, from the Templates node Time Leaf, click Finish. Here is our project and our main Java file. Let us create the controller package and class. So right click on the base package, choose new package, append controller, click finish. Create a new class by right clicking and choosing new class and calling it test controller, click finish. Let us mark it with the controller annotation. Next, let us create the request mapping for the root. We create a method which returns a string which is the name of the view, here index, we want to display to the client. Let us fix the imports. This is where timely will kick in and show the web page. Let us create the web page now. Timeleaf expects the web page with the same name to be present in the templates folder under source main resources. So let's right click here, choose new, go to other and from the web node choose HTML file. Click next. Give it the same name which our controller is returning. So index. First, let us include the XML namespace for Timeleaf using XML NS colon TH equal to HTTP www.timeleaf.org. Inside the body, let us put a div in which we simply create two buttons with value button 1 and button 2. Very simple page but sufficient for us to illustrate the concepts. Let us see how it looks at this point of time. So let's right click on the project and choose run as Spring Boot app. This app is deployed to embedded Tomcat listening on port 8080. Let us go to the browser and type HTTP localhost 8080 and here we see our two buttons. So everything is wired and working correctly. Now let us add some style to our page. Spring Boot will look at the static folder under source main resources for the static content like CSS and JavaScript files. Let us create a folder CSS for CSS files under static. Let us right click on that and choose new file and name it as custom.css. Let us put a style for button with a background color of orange. Going back to our page, let us put the class as button for button 1. Now to refer to the custom.css file, we put in the header section link rel equal to stylesheet and in the href we refer to the slash css slash custom.css with reference to the static folder. So this is how you specify the static content. Let us say we want that when we click button 1, a JavaScript function named my function should be invoked. Let us create a JavaScript file containing that function. So right click on static and choose new folder, name it JS. Creating separate folders makes it easy to organize. Now right click on JS and choose new file. Call it custom.js. Inside the file, let us write our function which simply is raising an alert. Let us now go back to the page and refer to it using script of type text slash javascript source as slash js slash custom.js again relative to the static folder. We can similarly refer to popular third party CSS and JavaScript files. So let us paste the bootstrap.min.css file in the CSS folder and paste the bootstrap.min.js file and jQuery.min.js file in the JS folder. We will refer these files inside our page in the same way relative to the static folder. So slash CS slash bootstrap.min.css file and then the jQuery and bootstrap JavaScript files. To demonstrate that these work, let us first put the class for the div as container which is a bootstrap class inside the bootstrap.min.css file. Write a document.ready script using jQuery where we say that when button 2 is clicked, 
raise an alert saying button 2 is clicked. Let us stop and start our app again. Go to the browser and refresh the page. We see the position of buttons change so that Bootstrap CSS file is referred properly with the container class. Our custom CSS file is referred successfully giving buttons orange color. Let us click button 1 and we see the alert button 1 pressed so our custom JavaScript is referred successfully. Let us click button 2 and we see the jQuery in action with the alert so it is working properly. Cool. Now let us look at the second method of pulling the third party static files using web jars and maven. Web jars package libraries or resources and makes them available to your Spring MVC application. The benefits of using web jars includes support for build tools such as Gradle and Maven and these tools handle transitive dependencies automatically. This approach is good as it is easy to configure and pull. So right click on the pom.xml file, choose Maven and then add dependency. Search for org.webjars. As you can see there are so many of these standard libraries available using org.webjars. Let us select bootstrap. We see it here in the pom. Let us add another dependency put org.webjars and this time pick jQuery. Here is its dependency. Let us stop the project. Let's expand the maven dependency node and here we can see the downloaded jar files by maven. Let us go to bootstrap, expand it and we see under resources the webjar folder, version 4.10, CSS folder and the min file. Let us right click and copy its qualified name. Let us go back to the page and now refer to this by removing our local files in the static folder with this path. Let us remove meta env and resources as we want to take the path under that. Similarly from the js folder let us copy the qualified path name for the bootstrap.min.js file. Go to our web page, replace the reference with this, remove meta env and resources. And finally, here is the downloaded jQuery jar again. Under resources, web jars 3.3.1-1. Let us copy the qualified path name for the jQuery min.js file. Go to our page and replace the reference, again removing meta env and resources. So now, Maven has downloaded the files for us which we are referring using web jars. Let us start the app again. Go back to the browser, click on history, remove any cache, let us submit the URL again. We still see our styles and clicking on buttons, we can still refer to the custom JavaScript and jQuery. Finally, the third method is to use CDN URLs. So let us remove these three references and replace them with the CDNs for these files referring to the URLs where they are hosted. Let us stop and start our app and our page is able to refer to the style sheets and the JavaScripts as before. In this video, we saw how in our Spring Boot project we can refer to static content like the JavaScript and CSS files. We saw all three methods, namely referencing local files, using Maven to download these files and then referring them, and finally using CDNs. Thanks for watching.